this video, we'll take a look at Avalor's ability to build custom dashboards and reports. So we'll start by coming over to the My Dashboard section, and we'll see a list of dashboards that have been built by the end user, not by the development or product management team. So in this case, we've built a dashboard to give us basic understanding of asset inventory. How many assets do we have in an environment broken out by type of asset, data source, or operating system, and then more details about the assets themselves, like is there a PII on them? Do they have access to critical applications? Do they have the proper EDR installed on them? As mentioned a moment ago, these are custom dashboards that are built by the end user. And so I'll take and show you exactly how you can, can come in and, and configure these. So we'll click into the all assets by type to start with. And we'll see that here we have the dashboard configuration panel that allows you to configure the dashboard and how this, this particular widget will look. So for starters, let's talk about the visualization. As you can see here, we have uh, what we refer to as a donut view here. You can simply click one of these other choices and it will change to a pie view or a vertical bar or horizontal bar. You can configure it however you'd like. Additionally, if you want to apply filters, then you can come in, for example, right now this is giving us all of my assets for my entire organization broken out by asset type. You see that by the measurements and the dimensions section. If I wanted to filter this down and say only show cloud assets, then I can come in and search for the field within our data model called asset is a cloud asset. And when I select this and set it to true, you'll see that the numbers drop from 94 to 44. So it's very easy to apply whatever filter makes sense for your specific situation. Let's take a look at a couple of other dashboards that we've built for some of our clients that we've sanitized. So here we have a dashboard that we've built for a customer that wanted to better understand their, their coverage for in-scope assets. So they have a variety of different tools installed in their environment, such as Carbon Black, Big Six, Intune, Apex One, etc. And they want to make sure that those are all installed everywhere that they should be. So the column on the left is simply based on the feed that we get from that source. So anytime Carbon Black reports uh, about an asset, then we know that that asset has Carbon Black on it. But a more challenging question is, what about the assets that don't have Carbon Black, but are supposed to? So if you think about that filter that I just applied a second ago for asset as cloud asset, we can also filter on other attributes like the type of asset. So for example, if the customer says that their carbon black deployment covers all workstations and Windows servers, then we can put that filter in when we're constructing this widget to say asset does not have carbon black, but it is one of the asset types I just mentioned. And then we'll be able to see the assets that do not have carbon black that should. And I should mention that this screenshot was taken right after we shared this dashboard with the customer before they had an opportunity to take action on it. These numbers are much better now. So in addition to visualizing the information from a high level, as I just mentioned, taking action on the data is where reports come in. So we have this other screenshot that's showing the report that aligns with that same dashboard that I just showed you. It's the same 8,670 roughly assets but now it's a table or a list. So the entire list can be downloaded and sent to the appropriate team, or you can use the filter capabilities within the platform to filter on any additional attributes, such as the region where the asset is or the asset owner, et cetera, and then send that to the appropriate person. Also, you can schedule these lists to be sent out. Now you might not want to send something out when there's 8,000, that's, that's kind of overwhelming, but once you get to steady state, and there's really these numbers tend to be around zero, but every once in a while, a new asset is deployed that doesn't properly get the right software on it. So this jumps up from zero to some higher number like two or three, then you could have this report automatically sent out to the appropriate resource. Finally, I'll show one more dashboard where we've pulled in the information from Zscaler, the suspicious content score on the user. And we've associated that with the workstation that that user was last seen to log into uh, and what department they're in and the host name, operating system of the asset. So this is, gives you an example of how we can pull information from Zscaler among other sources to aggregate that with the other finding information that we have from maybe your vulnerability management system like Tenable or Rapid7, Wallace, et cetera.